Hi there! This is Andrei Mihalchuk and RTFM's video blog, the information you will never find in your regular user's manual. In this episode, we will build a simple robot and program it to solve a maze. The best part of the project is that it will only take about 15 minutes of your time, requires no soldering, no expensive materials and no advanced skills at all. probably have heard most simple robots are built around a microcontroller. So our first step will be choosing the right chip. Some people prefer Arduino, some basic stamp, FPGA based solutions, full scale PC processors. Well, the good news is that for this project you can choose any of those. For instance, I chose LC864312, specifically designed for I honestly have no idea what this chip does, and this is exactly why I chose it for this simple project. So pick any chip you like and let's proceed with the power source for our robot. You can get one of these 3 volt coin batteries in any store nearby. The final piece of hardware we'll use is this tiny shiny piece of electromechanics. It looks like a battery, but it is not. It's called a vibration motor. You can find it in any cell phone or pager. If you don't have a cell phone to spare, you can get this vibration motor for 5 bucks from SparkFun Electronics. Let's start building our robot with attaching the vibration motor to the microchip. If you've got the fresh motor, you should already have the adhesive. Just remove the protective film and stick it to the chip. Like that. If it doesn't have the adhesive, you can use electrical tape or tiny drop of glue. Just don't use a double-sided adhesive foam tape, as it will significantly reduce the speed of the robot. Next, use a piece of tape to attach the blue wire of the vibration motor to the battery. Observe the polarity. The red, positive wire should go to the side of the battery marked as plus, and the blue, negative one, should go to the other side. Do not attach the red wire to the battery just yet. Stick it to the tape. Use the foam tape to attach the battery to the microcontroller. Now, if you bend the electrical tape, you can use it to stick the red wire to the battery. It effectively works as a power button. Take a look at the maze we want our robot to solve. It is built in a manner that allows solving it using so-called left-hand rule. That means that one can solve it by following the left wall of the maze. What we need is to make our robot to follow that rule. It's time to program our robot. We can easily do it by bending the pins. If you bend the front coupled pins to the left, it will tend to turn right. If you bend them to the right, it will tend to keep left, and this is exactly what we need. Here is the example of the right-handed robot in action. Let's reprogram our robot to follow the left-hand rule and see how it will work in the maze. In the following episodes, we'll be researching and using more sophisticated technologies. I hope this first step in the world of robotics was easy for you. See you later!